Hey Porsche fans, Daniel here, and obviously it's wet. It's really wet outside. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, and you've probably heard on the news how there's torrential rains. Uh, it's been raining for like a week, and it's gonna rain for another week, so guess what? Cars are sitting here in the garage staying dry. I would love to get out on the back roads. It's not track season, it's not autocross season, so uh, generally I'd be out driving the back roads. And even if it was dry, unfortunately folks, most of my back roads are either washed out, landslides, trees falling all over them. Yeah, it's really bad. So I'm sitting here in the garage thinking, what can I do to the cars today? And then I remembered that uh, over a year ago, my buddy Mark gave me some aspherical mirrors for uh, the GT4. Uh, so, you know, I thought, well, wow, it's been sitting in the box a while. I think it's time to make a video and install them. Now there are tons of videos on installing these out there. It's pretty much all the same on the late model Porsches, uh, but people like how I do my how-tos, so hopefully this will be the video you turn to for installing new aspherical side mirrors on your Porsche. So let's get started. So what are aspherical mirrors? Well, most of your side view mirrors on your cars are totally flat, uh, except these have this little dotted line to show you where the outer edge of the mirror, where your blind spot would be, is actually slightly curved. You can even see a little bit of the curve in the glass. In fact, the entire mirror surface is curved to give you a wider field of view overall compared to the stock mirrors but that outer edge is curved a little extra to help with blind spot protection. These are original Porsche parts. I don't believe they're equipped with any of the cars in America, in North America. Not sure why, I feel like it's a safer thing to have, but you can order them from Suncoast Parts. My buddy Mark gave these to me. I think they were already used. In fact, unfortunately, the passenger side mirror already has uh, some scratches in it. Just gonna do this for a demo today, but I won't be able to live with those on my car. I think I'll have to replace them at some point. The mirrors are actually held in pretty simply. A lot of cars are designed this way. You've got these little spring metal clips here, and uh, those are just gonna sort of clip the mirror into the mirror housing. You just need to pull with enough force to pop them out. Now it is a little scary because you feel like if you pull too hard, you're gonna flex the mirror and it's gonna break off. Now, totally possible, I've seen it on other cars, but remember it's completely backed by this plastic area. It's glued to that, so there's a lot of reinforcement, uh, but you do wanna to try to get your hand back there best you can and uh, pull with even force. These are super easy to install. It'll take five minutes both sides, so let's get started. So on your mirror, you'll want to just twist it to the outermost position. You can use your hand or you can use the power. It's fine either way. Um, I do suggest maybe running some tape around the edge of the mirror. I've got PPF all over everything. The car's stealth wrapped, so I'm not really worried about that, but it is sharp glass and you know it, it might scratch your paint. So I would definitely run some tape uh, if you've got a nice shiny car. Now I'm gonna use a trim tool. This helps just kind of give you a little more room to pry back there, but you wanna get your fingers in there my fingers are pretty thin, so I'll get behind the best I can, but just give it a tug and it pops right off, just like that. And then here you can see we've got our two connecting wires, so just pull those off and you're all done. All right, now that that's off, we can uh, get our aspherical ones and throw them on. On the back side, there were two little contacts with wires attached. I don't know if that's for heat folks or what. I can't think of any other reason it would be there, but I didn't think these were heated. Now mine does not have auto dimming. And I know that because if you look at this other one here, it has secondary wires. And you can see that they have the soldering points on the mirror and this extra pigtail that would normally nest in this little uh, plastic clip here. Mine has that plastic clip, but no cables here. So this is an auto dimming mirror and you can also tell because it has this uh, bit of border all the way around. It's probably a little difficult to see in the camera. So if I install this on my car, will I have auto dimming mirrors? No, because I don't have anything to plug in to this pigtail here. No big deal. You can still use these mirrors if you don't have auto dimming. So we're gonna install this one now and uh, see how it looks and then install the passenger side. All right, I've got my aspherical mirror here and it installs the same way we took the other one out. So let's get started. We'll just connect our wires to the contact points again. Uh, 
And then you got these metal tabs. They just go up in the top left and right corners. You'll find them pretty easy. Just try to position the glass the way you uh, had it before you tugged on it and press. And that's it. A spherical mirror is installed. Now you might get a little better grip if you take it and push it this way and this way. You can get your finger into that slot a little better. said taping things up is probably a good idea even right here you can see the glass kind of caught a little bit of the edge now generally you're not going to be able to see that but uh, you know if that's going to bother you uh, tape this up as far in as you can even this is the line where my PPF is and it's still scratched even uh, inside of that so a little annoying but uh, I'll probably never think about it again all right a new one here we go all right now that we got our new mirrors installed let's uh, see how they look uh, so we're gonna make sure the mirrors are set up the way I want them to let's make some adjustments here I can glance over and see quite a bit out of that mirror before we only saw a small part of the air compressor now we see it plus a little of the wall next to it so th that's awesome now on the passenger side here I'm just gonna glance over and I'll zoom in for you so we can see a little better. So you can see the tail of the Cadillac that's parked next to me. Let's look at a comparison. All right, so now I'm here editing and I can see these two videos together. And honestly, on the passenger side, it doesn't seem like the aspherical mirror is a huge difference. On the driver's side, I found it very valuable and I think it's the angle at which you're looking at it. But the passenger side, uh, you know, the two images are pretty similar. Uh, the only reason we see more Cadillac on the flat mirror on the right is because it's actually tilted outward more and slightly down. Uh, but uh, look at the, the, the blue car there. Uh, they're almost the same. Maybe a little more of the blue car would be seen uh, on the right side if we had matched the position. So I can't say the right side is super valuable here, folks, uh, but uh, the driver's side, I definitely appreciate. Now there is one problem with these mirrors and other people have noted it. Take a look. Right here, you see this black crescent. That's reflection of the mirror housing in the mirror. And that's all area that you have no visibility of uh, because the housing blocks it. And that's unfortunate. I mean, you could possibly turn the mirror more inward. That's fine. But then you just see more of your car here and that I think is a problem. I'm going to tell you more about that in a sec. And now you have less view over here. So in some ways, the aspherical mirrors are really only partial gain as what they potentially could be because of those darn mirror housings. But that's just the way it is. So how do you minimize your blind spots? Well, setting your mirrors correctly is super important. And so many sources recommend, oh, just adjust your side mirrors so that you can see just a little bit of your car or if you have a, a rear door, maybe see the rear door handle or something. And then you always know, you know, you have a reference of where you are relative to your car. And I think that's ridiculous, honestly. I think that it's a total crutch. You're driving a sports car, you should have a pretty good feel for the car that you're driving and having to see your car is useless folks uh, unless you're going to get really close up to something in those moments yes you want to see your car and i'm going to show you that a different mirror setup will still allow you to do that but we want to get the most out of our mirrors so take a look at this so when i'm sitting in the driver's seat i can look in my rearview mirror and i see pretty much a tunnel of stuff right behind me and i'll see any cars that are far away approaching from the side and then I can glance over at my mirror and I'm going to see a certain amount of stuff. Here's the zoomed in view. And uh, right now I see, uh, I don't see the Cadillac that's parked right next to me. And, uh, but I do see the car that's parked behind it, the blue Acura. And I see a bit of my car. This is what people recommend you do. So you can say, oh yeah, I know where my car is. But folks, that is wasted mirror reflection right there. That is all wasted mirror reflection. You want to see all those things that are dangerous to you, not your car. So I'm going to 
move my mirror outward, folks, like this, until you can't see your car. It doesn't have to be too far past, but you definitely want it past that. Go a little farther. Boom, now look at that. I can now see the Cadillac that's parked next to me. That's the tail end of the Cadillac and the Acura. That's all you need to see. The Acura can be seen in the rear view mirror there. And I look over here, I can see it there. Plus I can see a car that's right up next to me. And, and how you want this folks is you wanna use your forward vision to see ahead. You wanna use your peripheral vision to pick up on small motion and you need to be able to just glance over and see what's right next to you. And I can see a car next to me. And you wanna use your side view mirrors to pick up on right behind that portion that you can see by just glancing over and your rear view mirror collects the end. You see, when you set your mirrors where you can see your car, there's a whole section of actual blind spot. But if you do this, whether you have aspherical mirrors or not, you're not gonna have blind spots. All right, so now you ask yourself, well, what, what if I wanna see my car? Well, folks, it's, it's very, very simple, very simple. You're just gonna move your head slightly to the right or slightly to the left and take a look in your mirror. That's all. You already turn your head a little bit to look at cars next to you. You do that and then just a little bit more and you can see the side of your car in the mirror. That's all you gotta do, folks. It's, it's very simple. And now you have more view. And I know it's uncomfortable at first. It was for me. Just try it. Widen those mirrors out a bit and you don't need to see your car. Just bob your head over and you got all the visibility you need. Don't take that artificial crutch of being able to see the side of your car. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, remember when installing these mirrors, take your time, get even pressure on the back the best you can. If you flex those mirrors, it's totally possible they might break. They generally won't, but it's possible. And uh, tape up the insides of your mirror housings to minimize any scratching if you're worried about that. Now, if you appreciated this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and consider hitting the bell be notified of future Porsche content. Thank you so much for watching the Jeff Yoli channel. We'll see you next time.